So for those E4 players who live under a rock, Paradox have just announced a new flavour expansion pack, E4 Origins, which mainly covers the continent of Africa. This has been a long time coming, as Africa hasn't been given much love over the years, though certainly it's been improved from the first patch. Just look at Congo all on its own. Being the name of a game you open with Salus, it is understandable that the European continent has seen the most amount of updates and attention, one could say to the expense of other continents, in particular Africa. From a marketing perspective, this also makes sense, considering the majority of the countries that capture people's interest are the European states, like Byzantium. But considering that these have been significantly updated with the E for Emperor patch, Paradox has returned to Africa, and we'll see what it's like when they release it on the 11th of November. In this video, therefore, I want to answer two questions. Firstly, what are the main features of EU4 Origins, and whether they look any good? And secondly, I want to examine whether I think this immersion pack will succeed, or potentially flop like Leviathan. In fact, if you don't want this video to flop like Leviathan, make sure to like the video, as the YouTube gods absolutely love it. Right, let's get into it. So starting with the features of EU4 Origins, what does this immersion pack actually add to the game? Probably the most anticipated release is the new mechanics added to the Jewish religion in the game. Judaism in EU4 has always felt lacklustre and bland, since no mechanics have ever been added to it. In the upcoming expansion, the developers have added Torah aspects for the Jewish faith, which work similar to those of the Protestant religion as in that you can reduce unrest or decrease interest per annum. Given the number of loans I always have in game, this religion is about to become a lot more useful and certainly adds flavour to Ethiopia. Not only have the mechanics changed, but we now get in-game events for the Jewish religion. You can also form the Jewish nation of Israel, potentially giving you some new campaign ideas. I now wonder where this religion would be ranked in the EE4 religious tier list, so it will be interesting to use it once it comes out. Another aspect E4 Origins has added is seven new big country mission trees to the game for the most historically relevant countries in Africa. The first one to be announced was Mali, which now starts broken and weak in a starting disaster, similar to Majapahit in Leviathan, where the missions are designed to help cope and manage the disaster. Historically, this makes sense as well, since Mali declined after the famous king Mansa Musa died. Paradox also added an expansionist mission tree to Songhai, which you could say was the Prussia of Africa during this time, due to their military conquests and the dominance of the Western Sahel in the 16th century. Some other countries which are also given mission trees are Ajuran, which historically was known for its irrigation system and trade, which has now been implemented into its missions, being able to form the new formal nation of Somalia. Ethiopia has also been given a new mission tree, which now has a strong focus surrounding their contact with the Europeans. This was historically vital for Ethiopia's survival, as without the help of the Portuguese Empire, they would have permanently been annexed by their fierce rival, Adol, which were themselves backed by the Ottoman Empire in the 16th century. Finally, the new country mission trees we are going to discuss are those of Mutapa and Kilwa, the two biggest tags in East and Southern Africa. Kilwa was historically known as a great trade power, and now its missions reflect this. One mission that caught on was that you can now colonise Australia, so hopefully you can get to the kangaroos before the English. Mutapa has been given missions that are revolving around the historical fall of Zimbabwe, where you, the player, have to try and bring back the old empire to its former glory. You can also create the new nation, the Zulu Kingdom, which is intended to be a fun country to play as, and looks like it'll have some pretty good national military ideas for expansion, reflecting their former militaristic society. These new mission trees I've covered aren't the only new ones, as there will be five smaller mission trees with four regional mission trees. E4 Origins also adds a bunch of new formable nations, generally making Africa a lot more interesting than what it is now. For those of you that appreciate the visual changes to the game, you can also finally get some new unit models for African warriors, and new African music, which I'm sure you'll enjoy as you're taking out the world. So for those of you who can't afford the expansion, or can't be bothered, there's also going to be some free features as well. Expanding from Leviathan, Paradox have now added 52 new monuments to the game, such as the Santa Maria, and a bunch of completely different ones on all corners of the map.
So, what do I actually think of this immersion pack? Will it be received as poorly as Leviathan? In my opinion, it's almost impossible for this immersion to be received as poorly as Leviathan, which was one of the worst game expansion packs releases in history, and Paradox have taken a few measures to significantly prevent it from ever happening again. Early on in the developer diaries, Paradox stated there will be no new provinces added to the game, since it can sometimes cause issues and bugs, as what happened with Leviathan, where there was a high risk that the new update would ruin people's prior campaigns, causing a high amount of resentment and anger. The price tag will also be far lower than those of the other DLCs in the past, since it's an immersion pack, meaning that it is more limited in scale, and only focuses around a particular geographic area. This simmering of expectations has prevented a potential overhype as the threshold for success is much lower. Even though most of the problems that the Leviathan outdate caused were ironed out within a week, the first impressions were key, and as a result, Paradox Interactive have learned from their past mistakes. The developers have been asking for a large amount of feedback with each developer diary, and getting rid of features that could potentially break the balance of the game and annoy players. Even though it's unlikely to completely flop, I don't doubt, however, there are a few concerns that need to be accounted for. Most EE4 players will be far more sceptical of this new E4 expansion compared to last time. The dislike to like ratio and the YouTube comments from the trailer are an example of sour taste left in people's mouths, with some people mockingly joking that they can finally fulfill their dream of being a bug tester, or some others stating that they hope they learn their lesson. You also have to consider that maybe even though Africa is in need of an update, most E4 players might not have much interest in the sub-Saharan region, as hardly anyone in the player base is really from there, and the more popular North African countries such as Tunis and Morocco are not really getting an update. The question remains, will people actually be interested in buying this expansion, especially when you take into consideration all the DLC before it? It's possible that they will, since a lot of people have thousands of hours in the game, but haven't played much in this region. Nonetheless, it's still something to contemplate when considering whether this expansion will be a success. In my opinion, I think this immersion pack will be a success, given what I've read and I plan on getting it. But what do you guys think though? Are you excited about this new E4 immersion pack and can't wait to get your hands on it? Or do you have a different opinion and are more sceptical of the expansion? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.